So welcome everybody, welcome to Carleton and to the Faculty of Public Affairs. Uh, we call it FPA, colloquially. Uh, my name is Dr. Brenda O'Neill and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs. And I believe this morning we have uh, students who are entering the, the EURIS, the European, Russian and Eurasian Studies Program, as well as the Political Science Program. Uh, so you, those programs and they're in units themselves, departments or schools or, or institutes, uh, I oversee 12 of them. So that's what a dean does. So that's why I'm here this morning to say hello to you. Uh, my colleagues and I are absolutely thrilled that you're joining us uh, this year. Uh, well, just want to take a moment though before we do actually start this celebration to acknowledge that Carleton University is located on uh, traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. And I know that some of you may be attending from outside of locations of uh, outside of Ottawa from different locations, but I think it's nevertheless important that we take a moment to acknowledge the traditional indigenous lands on which Carleton University uh, sits. And I think we should need to do so with intention and do so purposefully. While I know you're gonna be extremely busy with your programs in the next couple of years, I want you to, as uh, one of the messages I wanna give you is that it's important to remember that you're part of a broader community uh, being online, I think sometimes it does feel a little bit lonely, but I'm hoping that increasingly we'll be moving away from online in the coming year. And one of the strong things at Carleton is that sense of community. And I think our instructors, our profs, and staff, everybody's been working really hard this summer to try to figure out uh, how to ensure that that sense of community uh, exists in the coming year. The other thing, the other message that's an important one is, although I said you will be busy with all of your courses, it's important to remember that your university time should be uh, made up of more than just your courses. There's all kinds of events and lectures and talks and all kinds of things that you can do as a student uh, at Carleton. And I think it's important that you can meet a whole bunch of different people when you're doing these things. So one of the things that I would say to you is try as much as possible to get involved in these things because it will open up your mind and broaden your experience. And I think you'll be better for it. There's also some firsthand experiences you can take advantage of. So keep an eye out for your email uh, inboxes to, to get a, for the messages that are sent out and all these things that you can participate in. One of them is obviously the FTA ambassadors. Uh, that's one thing that you could do in the coming year. It's also another one is assistance with your research as you again, move forward in your, in your university career. We have CureUp, which is the Carleton University Research Opportunity Program that allows you to get paid to actually do research. So there are some really uh, cool and interesting opportunities available to you. So again, I just, I just did wanna make sure that you know how excited we are that you're joining Carleton and that you'll be here with us for the next little while. We encourage you to get involved and we want you to make the most of the opportunities and experiences that are available to you at Carleton. And with that, I will hand it over to Stephanie Bose, the FPA's event and ambassador assistant. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you, Brenda. So hi, everybody, I'm Stephanie. I just wanted to let you know how the session is going to go and give you a brief introduction to our three ambassadors joining us today. So for the beginning of the session, our ambassadors will be saying a little bit about themselves, their unit, and what they wish they knew going into first year. From there, after the three ambassadors have spoken, we'll open up a Q&A. So at that point, feel free to unmute your mic, um, talk, uh, talk to them directly, or you can put it into the chat. Just remember that this session is being recorded. So if you wish to stay private and anonymous, just use the chat and keep your video off. So with all due, I will introduce the ambassadors. Uh, so from URIS, we have Lisa. From PolySci, we have James. And again, from PolySci, we have Anshel. So feel free to ask them any questions about what they're about to talk about or any questions that you have going into your first year. So I'm gonna pass it off to James and put you into his great hands. Excellent, well, thank you, Stephanie. It's uh, great to see um, some prospective students on the call, I guess not prospective anymore. Um, incoming students, it's great to uh, be with you all this morning. I'm James Krause. I am heading into my fourth year in the Department of Political Science here, um, specializing in international relations and minoring in law and legal studies. I love the department a lot, and I'm uh, really happy to be talking about the department. Um, I I'll, I'll first start on what I wish I knew coming into the program, um, coming in as a first year student. Uh, I wish uh, one of the biggest things I wish I knew. Um, 
or I considered was not to be so rigid in my plan. I originally didn't come to Carleton actually for political science. I came here for uh, the um, public affairs and policy management program. But I, so I, I, I set high expectations for myself and I was so rigid on making sure I met those expectations. And I was putting a lot of undue pressure and stress on myself. And uh, I, as, as the years have gone on, three going into year four, um, I, I realized that, you know, if I kind of sit back and let follow the path that my degree takes me on, it's a lot more fulfilling. So uh, the number one lesson I think I wish I knew and what I tell everyone uh, coming into first year definitely would be to um, be prepared to kind of be uh, fluid in your university degree path and, and your education. Um, and you'll get a lot more out of it um, at the end. S Stephanie, I don't know if uh, you want to pass it off to Anshul or... Yeah, that was just about Perfect. to. Good timing. Okay. <laughs> Anshul, go for it. Thanks, Stephanie. And James, thanks for that. So hi, guys. Uh, it's so good to see that there are some people here. Um, but like... Um, James said that you know the Faculty of Public of uh, sorry uh, Department of Political Science is um, a department that has so many engaging professors and lecturers and things you you just wish you learned before but here you are uh, my well, one of the things that I, I uh, wish I knew getting in the first year was it's not a slight academic it's a little to do with how uh, students and your peers are that. Uh, First year, everyone is just trying to be sort of a better person or just a better a version of themselves. And uh, uh, as every person you meet, just know they're uh, also, they, they are gonna be shy. They are gonna be nervous meeting someone new, someone they've never met. They don't know what you're gonna think of them. So interact with as many people as you can because you're gonna get to learn so much about them, their programs and just, um, the school as a whole. So um, interact with as many people as you can Meet. I know it's going to be a bit different. It's going to be socially distanced this time and with masks, but please do so. Um, and about my unit, like James said, we have one of the best professors. Uh, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in this, but I have taken other courses and policy professors are always there to help you out. It, it is a big uh, and uh, content heavy courses, every all of them. So they're always there to help you out. And TAs are amazing. And uh, we're always here to uh, help you out really. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Anshel, that's great. So now I'm gonna pass it off to Lisa and when she's finished, feel free to ask any questions that you wish. Hi everyone, um, I'm doing a double major in political science and European and Russian studies. Uh, one of the biggest things that I, uh, not that I regret not doing, but I think that I would have started earlier is being more involved in the various societies because they initially give you experience. Uh, for example, I'm the president of the European and Russian Studies Society, and that has given me immense experience. So when there's interviews and you can actually bring experience now from jobs, but kind of derive them from other uh, sources. Um, so there's, you can be a senator at Carleton, you can you can be on one of the committees. There are so many opportunities. You can be an undergraduate um, representative for your uh, department. There are so many opportunities that you can um, take part in that will benefit you uh, both professionally and uh, academically and help your growth. Um, also, I highly recommend uh, what I took part in was um, I, I utilized the, the, the libraries, um, what it was called but it was peer on peer uh it was another student that comes and helps you for for me it was economics i thought it was super hard uh it wasn't my favorite subject uh so there are subjects like law they have past sessions that would they do mock exams which is really great um if you have any doubts worries or anything i would highly recommend that um and i think you should really cherish every single semester every year because it really flies by like i'm starting my fourth year and it just feels like yesterday that i was the first year So I wish you all uh, lots of luck and uh, start looking into participating, getting to know everyone because you're gonna build connections for a very long time that will surpass the university uh, experience. Thank you. So true, definitely true. And I, I, feel, yeah. <laughs> and 
and and please check out all the uh, all the events that the university and Carlton, uh, sorry, Carlton and the faculty host because for URS they host so many events that are so great, like alumni events where you get to see uh, which career paths you can take, and then you can actually build contacts with those people um, and see um, what would interest you um, in the future as well. Like they they have that in URS and political science and. Yeah, for sure. And having the faculty events, it makes networking that much more interesting because all the people that you're networking with are in the same interests that you have. So I definitely, I really enjoy the faculty events quite a bit. Uh, so with that, uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to unmute your mics now, ask the questions or type them in the chat. Just going to wait a couple uh, seconds here to see if a question will come in. Feel free. Stephanie, I also think Anshul and I kind of uh, skipped over why we chose our unit and uh, what our favorite first year experience was. I was so, just thinking about that. Go uh, ahead, James. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can loop back in. We're not as prepared as uh, European and Eurasian studies, but um, let's, uh, yeah, let's go to back to that, I guess. Uh, maybe hopefully we can get some questions from that. So uh, I guess I'll start with a few things about our unit, why I chose it, why I love it, and uh, some career opportunities. Like I said, I uh, didn't originally come to Carleton for political science, but I came for the equally as great uh, PAPM, uh, Public Affairs and Policy Management Program. And that was a great program, but I was really attracted to the, uh, the, the fluidity of the political science department, uh, the amount of electives you can take, the kind of areas that you can specialize in international relations or political theory. So I was, uh, I was really impressed by the department's ability to kind of tailor their class offerings to um, students' interests, which is great um, as, as opposed to pre a prescribed set of classes, um, which is awesome. And also our professors are the best in the business, like Anshul said. Um, they have great um, research experience. They have great practical experience. And where better to study politics in, than in the nation's capital, right? The capital connection that Carleton always touts. Uh, we have a uh, great connection to Parliament Hill. We have great connections to embassies and to think tanks in downtown Ottawa. There's no better place to study politics or start a career in public service or in politics than in Ottawa. Um, I, I always love to talk about um, all the opportunities that Ottawa as a city and Carleton as a, as a university has given me. I've been able to work uh, on Parliament Hill as a parliamentary assistant to, um, to members of parliament. I work in campaigns and, um, and I often ask myself, would I have gotten those opportunities if I wasn't at Carleton? Um, so I'm forever thankful for everything Carleton has done for me um, and the opportunities to help me grow and develop. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that in my last year of the program here. Uh, so maybe, Anshul, do you have anything to uh, to add to that? Thanks, James. That was, uh, that's great. Uh, so for me, uh, the reason I chose this unit, so political science, was uh, I was just always interested in politics as a kid. And back in high school in Singapore, I had taken a global politics course, and that just sort of opened my interest even more. Um, and one of the main reasons I actually liked the, the unit in Carleton specifically was they were very adjusting. There were so many minors. You can specialize in so many different things. You can uh, really design your own interests. It doesn't just have to be a straight political science stream. You don't have to just focus on theory. You can do all sorts of things. We can focus on law uh, like I did. So uh, political science and like Dave James says, the professors are not just good, they're amazing. They really, uh, and even the um, advisors, they sort of help you to design uh, and take and advise you to take courses that are, are just going to help you, uh, you know, learn more in the stream. It's going to help you uh, sort of make career paths. So you're going to choose the kind of courses you take that, oh, what if I do this? Uh, maybe I can, you know, have a shot at this job. So uh, it's this, you know, one of the main reasons we did this stream. Uh, and we're glad to have uh, many people uh, joining the stream as well. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so we have no questions as of yet. However, I do have some questions from our past sessions that a lot of people had asked. Um, it was definitely a repeat in questions. Uh, so any, this is to any of the ambassadors. Should I buy the textbook? 
maybe uh, maybe I'll go first. I think our the student's answer will be different from the professor's answer that writes the textbook, but um, I'll 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 uh, I'll answer the question first. I think um, you should wait until the first couple classes to see if you need the textbook, um, and and that that will give you a better idea. Some professors as well, especially since moving online, have been so kind to put their the readings from the textbook online. So uh, hopefully any of our first years will have that experience so they don't have to buy it, but I'd wait for the first couple classes before you uh, open up your wallet. I finally add to that. Um, some people would say don't buy it, but I would say there are certain classes where the professor really draws from the textbook uh, readings on exams and for essay questions. Uh, like for midterms or or quizzes. So I would highly recommend you kind of ask the professor what would be from the textbook and as well try to find PDF versions. Um, and I know that the Carlton bookstore will price match any um, will price match any price as well. Off Amazon or anywhere else. Like, yeah, of course, I agree with both of them. Uh, so I think it's just about you seeing uh, uh, how your first or second week goes, asking your peers. Uh, yes, books are expensive, just to let everyone know that. Uh, we're not gonna sugarcoat that, they are expensive, they're big. Uh, but, you know, I guess if your interest is just at large in that course, um, I'm sure that book uh, wouldn't be an, an issue. You can always, uh, uh, you know, in the recent times, professors have been very welcoming and they have put at the books, uh, they have bought it and they've put it online. So, uh, just see how it goes but yes it's going to be useful for you don't worry yeah i completely agree i remember my first semester at carlton i bought all the books brand new before the classes started spent thousands of dollars that were unnecessary and then the professor's like here's the free pdf <laughs> so definitely wait a couple classes um it'll definitely lower your stress level around books completely agree um, and a lot of professors do pull from the books. So it's definitely good to have for when you're studying. Um, so does any of our guests, do they have any questions as of right now? Okay, so I'll take that as a no. And if you do keep typing in the chat, no problem. Um, I do have another question that is a, a good question coming from first year students. And that would be, how do you contact your professor in office hours and things like that with an online slash hybrid schedule? Uh, I think for every course, as soon as you get the course outline during the first week, uh, on the top, it says uh, the timings of professors, their office hours, uh, when they can be contacted and how. So I think uh, every professor might be a bit different as to how they do office hours. I know office hours may, could be a bit different um, this year, if you know, depending on if the professor wants to meet anyone in person, but they always make it clear as to how and when you can reach them. So I'm sure that's not going to be a problem for anyone. And usually, it's always email. Um, teaching assistants you are a little cooler, and they go by their phone numbers at times. Um, so just um, yeah, read the first page, and you'll know everything about the course. Thank you, Angel. <laughs> That's perfect. So um, you'll receive, usually you receive the syllabus, um, either the first class the day before or within that first week before the class from your professors. Uh, so once you receive that, definitely give it a read as it will tell you what to expect in the course, all the different aspects of the course. So then there will be no surprises while you're in the course. All right, if there are no questions from our first year students today, definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. And uh, Lisa, James, and Anshel, if you have any closing remarks, then definitely feel free to uh, take advantage now. Uh, can I ask a question? 100%, go ahead, Sean. Yes, thank you for taking my question. Um, so I'm new to this program as in I'm an undergraduate that's going into um, Carlton for the first time. And um, I know that my class is going to be online as opposed to being in person. And I was wondering what I should expect for my first day as a part of this program. Who are your question to? Um, it's to Stephanie. 
Oh, to me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Sorry. what what program are you going into? I'm going into uh, introduction into European and Russian studies. Okay, so you're uh, So in general, so I am the events assistant. So I took a different uh like different program at Carleton. So actually, if you do not mind, I will pass you to Lisa as she has firsthand experience of how things work nowadays. <laughs> yeah, so I actually designed one of the classes with the professor uh, the first years. Uh, it's very, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting. Um, it's very, it's so they kind of, the first year classes are, are not like, they try to limit the shock of, of um, you're not going to write thousands and thousands and thousands of words. Uh, it's very kind of the first class is kind of laid back. They explain everything um, and don't be shy. Ask the professor or the TA anything. They're there for that. If you have any questions, it's best to ask right away than wait like last minute to ask before um, the assignment is due. Uh, they're very flexible. If you have any issues, they will um, guide you through them. Uh, and everything in terms of content, it's very interesting and it's basic, it's very introductory. So there's no, nothing uh, very complex uh, in the beginning. It's very kind of eases you into it. And then um, you, get, you get to gradually build uh, on the knowledge throughout uh, each class. So I don't know, do you have okay, a then. question? Um, I do, yeah. So um, my specific question was, um, am I writing assuming that uh, this course will require a lot of, for say, essay style assignments? Uh, they are essay, but um, in my experience, uh, the first assignment that I had was more of kind of teach you how to write. It depends on the professor and everything. They kind of explain how do you write an essay, uh, like academically, in the academic, uh, keeping like an academic, because uh, it's kind of different from from, from high school and they kind of explain everything to you and guide you through it. Um, and the assignments, the first assignments are kind of easy and they explain everything. Uh, so don't, don't, be, um, don't be afraid that it's like too complicated. Um, and yes, it's essay, usually it's essay style. The, the, the midterms are different. They vary from multiple choice, short answer. Uh, it depends on the professor really. Ah, uh, I see then. And my last question, um, are you aware of the CU1001 course, which is kind of like the orientation sort of thing on Brightspace that is available to uh, undergraduates? And I was wondering if on that course, if there is a field on the ELUS program where I can uh, learn further. So I can actually answer this one as I helped to plan <laughs> the CU1001. Uh, <laughs> So now it's back to me. <laughs> um, so with that, we do have uh, separate videos for um, faculty specific uh, posted within the course. So there is a URIS video. So uh, U-R-U-S, <laughs> we say URIS for short. Um, so you'd be able to view that video. I do believe that some of the faculty members have also posted articles and stories within there. It was completely up to whether the faculty wanted to share their articles or not. Um, so as not being a student, I don't have access to the full course. So I couldn't tell you who exactly submitted articles. Um, however, there are things within there. So you can, if you'd like, reach back out to me and I can contact the main coordinator if you're having troubles finding it. Uh, but if you do find them, then that's perfect and you won't need me. <laughs> nice. Okay, then that sounds very good. Thank you. Perfect. You're very welcome. Does anybody have any questions? I know I, Paul wanted to say a few words. If I can add, uh, I don't, I don't, I think uh, everyone knows that there's a requirement for the language. I would recommend starting right away. Uh, with one language class uh, a semester preferably or over the summer if you want to take an intensive class that's great but starting right away within the first year doesn't doesn't mean the first semester or the second uh, starting right away would be great just to get it out of the way and keep in mind the breath requirements that you have to to fulfill and visiting the academic um, advisor uh, yearly or or per semester would be great too yeah i used to visit them per semester and um if you have the time and the extra bit, then I definitely do recommend the intensive courses over the summer. Um, I definitely had more luck myself with those. <laughs> um, they're just a, a little bit more chill because if that's the only one you're taking, you don't have to focus on a bunch of more courses while you're learning a whole new way to speak and uh, all the linguistics. So that is a perfect point from Lisa. All right, Paul, did you want to say a few words? 
Well, I, I thought I, 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 you're probably wondering who you know this gray haired guy is and whether he's a first year student or not. Um, I, I was a first year student last century. Um, so my name's Paul Wilson. I'm an associate dean within the Faculty of Public Affairs. So if you heard, if you heard uh, Dr. O'Neill at the beginning, I work for her. Um, and my role is called students in enrollment. So uh, helping with promotion, um, uh, academic discipline, if there are ever any kind of problems, they come to me, we won't talk about that. Um, so I, I just wanted to echo what, um, what uh, others have been saying, that professors are there to help you, um, not only with the, you know, with the content and that sort of thing, but you know, if you do have questions, uh, it's part of professors' jobs to answer your questions. They will make themselves available through quote, office hours, which used to be sitting at a desk and people would line up outside the, you know, in the hallway. I don't think that happens so much anymore, but they will tell you in the course outline how you can approach them. Is it by email? Is it, you know, within certain hours? Uh, and they are there to be accessible. Um, so if you have questions about how things work or you've got questions about content, um, questions about, you know, what you heard in a lecture, please contact them because not only are they interested in their subjects and interested in helping you, but it is their job to do that. Um, like, uh, you know, all human beings, sometimes some are better at it than others, um, but, you know, you're entitled to answers. And if there's, uh, there's other resources in the university, um, uh, Carleton's got, you know, lots of things that can help. Um, so take advantage of them, ask, you know, the student ambassadors, if you've got questions, because there's, there's lots of people who are willing to give you um, advice. So take advantage of it. You're not bothering people by, by doing that. Including associate deans, they're happy to help too. Thank you, Paul. That's great. And that's a perfect note that your professors are people too. There's nothing to be scared of. I always, it's a little different now, but I was first class would walk right up and introduce myself. Um, and then when you ask questions later, have to go to office hours, then they know who you are. And they're like, oh yeah, you are my student. Um, so definitely good to introduce yourself to the professor, whether it be online like we are today or in person. Um, so if there are no further questions, we are approaching the end of the session. So we have room for more questions if anybody has any, but if not, then I think we can call that a session. Are we all good? Okay. Uh, I, have, uh, I have one last question for uh, Paul Wilson. Okay. Mm -hmm. For Paul? Okay, so my question, so my question for Paul Wilson is that, so I know on the program site that I think there's some sort of reference to uh, learning an uh, Eastern European language as part of this course. And I was wondering if that is mandatory or if there was a class associated with that I need to take along with this program? I don't know. I've been doing this for a, a month. I'm from political management, so it's a different program. So I'll bet Lisa knows the answer though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I could answer that. So it's, it's a European uh, language. So it could be Spanish, it could be French, it could be uh, Russian, it could be, uh, what else is there? I think Polish. There, there's like a whole list of them. Uh, and that you can choose from if you go visit um, the calendar, the U.S. calendar. I think it's on there. But if anything, I would contact uh, I would contact the advisor for for the, for the department. They would explain that to you uh, in far more detail than I can. Um, but if you already know French or Russian or any or Spanish or any other years like European language, uh, you can be exempt from it. You just have to pass a test. Uh, a certain test. Um, um, what, what, did you have a particular interest in a language? Um, well, first of all, I'm not taking this course as my major. I'm currently taking journalism as my major, but I kind of want to do a dual credit sort of thing with this thing. So I'm not sure if this will apply to me too, just because I'm not taking year of, um, specifically just alone. I'm taking journalism as well. So I'm not sure if this will apply to me. And to answer your question, yes, I am already studying the Russian language, so I'm not completely new to it. If you're doing a double major like I am, uh, you will have to, you will have to, uh, it's a requirement. If you're taking a minor, it is not a requirement from, from what I know, yeah. but as a, as a double major, you would be, uh, you would have to take a language. 
if you if you're taking okay, russian, then, I, I would recommend continuing russian then it would be easier okay then and do you think i should fulfill this requirement like later on um in my life at carlton or like as soon as possible i recommend within the first two years would be the best first because during your fourth year you're kind of uh, like I'm in my fourth year and I'm kind of trying to fit, fit everything in and make sure I have ever, all the requirements. And, and during the fourth year, um, I know in the first year, you might have a lot of re- prerequisites that you have to fulfill. So definitely, I would look in the second and third year, but preferably <laughs> from personal experience, I would say first, second and third would be the best years to do it. A fourth is kind of pushing uh, the limit. If you want to graduate. <laughs> Well, that sounds pretty good for me just because right now I'm, I'm not even sure if I want to do a dual major right now. I'm just sort of uh, figuring out my bearing as to what I'm interested in. So um, I'm reassured that I can uh, take this up in the second year. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. And I, I recommend uh, that if you like to do the decision um, and not to do extra credits, um, I would recommend you talk to an advisor. For me, they recommended that I make a decision within the first year because then that impacts your courses because then you have less electives. Yes, I was just about to say Mm -hmm. the exact same thing as Lisa. And then if you choose to go on to a minor instead of double major, at that point, the requirements are completely different and a language require, like our language course might not count towards the minor. So you definitely want to contact the advisors. So if you just go on uh, Carleton FPA and go under units and do uh, URIS, from there, you can see who we are and look at all the different uh, department advisors and everybody within URIS, and they'll be able to help you no problem at all. Okay then, so I guess you recommend that I take, per se, um, some sort of um, conferencing sort of call with someone at URIS just to make sure that I'm fulfilling my requirements? Absolutely. Okay then, what was the website you were talking about? So we do, <laughs> Uh, so carlton.ca slash FPA, and then within that, you can see our units at the top, and you just click on URIS for the unit, and then from there, the unit will say about us, contact us, various things like that, and there'll be people underneath that with their emails and phone numbers posted, and you'll be able to contact them from there. Okay, then, thank you very much. That's very helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Do we have any further questions? All right. Well, I did put my email within the chat. If anybody has a question or wants to connect with an ambassador, I can totally uh, help with any questions and get you answers. So please feel free to email me at any time. I'm also the person who sent you the Zoom registration. So if you forget to get my email from the chat today, just reply to that email you got yesterday, giving you the Zoom information for today. And I'm more than happy to help you out. I'd like to thank you all for coming today. And I wish you the best of luck in your first year. Best of luck, guys. Bye, everybody. Take care. Good luck.